Hey everybody, welcome back to another Facebook Live video. Eric here, marketing coordinator, and as you can see, Chris is back from Florida. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> it's cold here and Florida's warm, but that's all right. We'll... We're getting close though, here in Ohio. We're about two weeks away from spring, so we're getting there. Uh, it doesn't as... feel like it. Yeah, no, it doesn't. As always, we'll be answering your questions, uh, giving away free products. Make sure you post your comments, questions below, like and share the video. And uh, Chris, we got a couple things to talk about today. What, what are we going to cover? We're going to talk about the two-step program, um, putting treating the oil side and the fuel side. And mm -hmm. want to thank everybody for coming back on Friday. But the main reason we do this program is to get more product information out and to share more about what's happening here at the LSI family. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get an idea. Um, Hot Shot Secret is our main name brand that we that you recognize us as, but Lubrication Specialties is the, the main company. And that's what we're here to kind of fill you in on what we've been doing this week and give you some product knowledge. Yeah, and as soon as we wrap up today, we're gonna try to keep it relatively short video because as soon as we finish up, uh, TJ Big Country is in Florida for the uh, Suncoast Spring Shakedown race this weekend so as soon as we finish up on here stay on the facebook page because tj is going to go live from the track and then a little bit later this evening roughly eight o'clock eastern time kyle is going to go live from texas we got a bunch of stuff going on so make sure you stay tuned yeah, kyle's at the keystone show mm -hmm. and they're going to have Emily Mahler there and he's going to yep. do a live feed from there if you want to jump in on that we're also going to give away some free product we're going to answer your questions um, and just recap on all the things that are going on this week at LSI. And we'll, we'll be as quick as we can so we have room for TJ in yep. here. And of course, we're still going to do the free product giveaway. Today, we're going to be giving away Stitch and Eliminator. So, questions, comments below gives you a chance to, to win free products. And this week on the web, you're going to get a free t shirt, any order over $100. So, if you're looking for a Hot Shot Secret t shirt, this is the week to get it. Just put your size in the order notes so we know what size to send you during the checkout. There's no coupon code, mm -hmm. but we will send you a free T-shirt if it's if you put your size in under the order notes and you order $100 worth of product. You get a free T-shirt. And don't forget, we got an email newsletter that we have. Subscribe to that on the, on the website. Get exclusive deals, content, and uh, we'll actually talk about a, a new content piece we have out just released this past week so yeah we've really been up in our game on these email newsletters we're sending out a lot more informative things mm -hmm. instead of just promotional things so we, we send them out a couple times a week and basically anything that has to do with the diesel diesel truck yep. fuel systems oil and we're, we're trying to scour the web for the best information for you and then some of them we write ourselves you know if we keep hearing the same questions come up we'll write an article about it and then send it out so Sign up for the email deals. It's it's worth it. Well, if you know if it does it gets to be too much, let us know. We'll take you off the list. It's fine. And this weekend, for you, those of you who like to tune in and watch our segments on TV, we've got a couple episodes this weekend. Tomorrow at one o'clock on Motor Trend Network, which used to be Velocity, uh, we got Truck You at one o'clock. We're going to be covering Stiction Eliminator. So tune in then. And Sunday, 10 a.m. and 10:30 a.m., we're going to be on Truck You and Two Guys Garage. Uh, one of them will be covering FR3, and then we'll have the two guys' garage. We'll be covering both Stiction Eliminator and FR3. So tune in this weekend. It should be a good weekend for TV, especially if you're in the cold climate like we are. This is the time <laughs> to sit back and watch TV. Um, we have this week at LSI, we had a new article on the evolution of the Duramax. And we got a big thanks to Dan Zelton of Dan Service Center for Help. Did you work on that, Eric? No, I did not actually. Uh, Brian did, and then Dan, of course, supplied us some comments and, and was real helpful getting that put together. So thank you, Dan. And one of the big things we've been working on in research and development this week is trying to come up with a display for the Franz filter to show how it works is one of the things that we're working on, a like a demonstration unit. Mm -hmm. you know, the Franz takes down to one micron um, particles out of the oil and your your oem filter takes out 15 micron but trying to demonstrate that's been a chore so we've got a couple ideas uh, we didn't get a working model yet but we we're closer and closer and closer plugging away at it we're, we'll get it we'll get it yeah. and we also have a zero w8 weight that they're testing in one of my cars actually yeah we talked about it last week actually in the the ford and mm -hmm. uh, finished up testing i think for the most part now just it's, sending it out for oil analysis we did we've, we've got the oil analysis out i've been driving it i we've not seen any mileage gains but you can definitely tell there's a little bit more pep in the engine mm -hmm. uh, the biggest thing is just to see if the engine dies out or if it can have lower than normal amounts of wear because that would be a, a huge coup to show that you can use uh you know a zero w8 weight where a 5w30 was called for 
So it's just basically proof of concept is what we're after. If it works, it does. If not, then it'll be okay too. We'll move on. Yep. How about marketing this week? Yeah, marketing, we've actually had a lot going on, a lot of ads that's been going out, prepping for new TV coming up for the rest of the year. Uh, but like we mentioned earlier, the big thing, we've got the race this weekend down in Florida, which TJ and Kevin is at. And Kevin was, uh, he attended Suncoast. They, they put on these, I don't know how to explain it, these research laboratories, basically, that they get guest speakers in. They talk about a lot of different topics. So Kevin went down a little bit early to, to sit in on those, hopefully learn, learn a little bit. And then, like we mentioned, Kyle's down in Texas. So that's some of the highlights from, from marketing. Very good. Very good. And so Levi, we, we don't have questions up here. Um, so if, if we, we get questions popped up, um, go ahead and shout them out unless Casey wants to come get the phone set up. But um, So in the meantime, while we get that worked out, make sure you post your questions below. She may have already set that up for you. Okay, for those of you just joining us, we're going to talk about the two-step fuel treatment and oil treatment. The stiction eliminator is the oil side and the diesel extreme is the fuel side. So the idea when I put these together was I wanted to be able to give a complete system cleaning. Now, it's kind of evolved since then, but the idea at the time was, you know, I'm driving my truck, whether it's a semi truck or a pickup truck, and I know there's something wrong. And I know as well as you guys that are out there working on your trucks, you can go through thousands of dollars in parts and dozens and dozens of hours trying to figure it out. One of the most common things I've always heard about diesels, and I've said it myself a couple dozen times, is when they're running, you love them, and when they're not, you despise them, you hate yeah. them, because it takes forever to figure out what's wrong with it. And, you know, so the point is, you know, you've got something wrong, you know that you've got hesitation, there's an issue, and you start putting parts on it, well, that didn't fix it, then you try the next thing, that didn't fix it, you take it to a mechanic, and he's been there three times, and it's still not running right. I want to devise products or develop products that would at least eliminate 90% of the guesswork. Um, the the stiction eliminator was the first one for the oil side, of course. And the idea was to get rid of any, any carbon buildup, anything that was slowing the injectors down, slowing your turbo down, clean it out. If you run that product after 500,000 miles, 500 or 1,000 miles, um, and you're still seeing an issue, then there's a pretty good chance that it's not because of, of stiction buildup. Um, could be a little bit of a chance. If you got 300,000 miles on the engine and you've yeah. never done it, then there, there could still be a chance you need a second treatment. But 99% of the time, it cleans it out in one shot. It's a good process of elimination. Exactly. You know, try the product. If it doesn't fix your issue, well, it's likely it's not a stiction related issue. So while well, the diesel extreme was the fuel side version of the stiction eliminator, you know, we wanted to attack the moisture that could be in there, the internal diesel injector deposits, any kind of carbon buildup, any varnish. Um, even small particles that could build up. So we, I wanted to be so strong that one treatment, if you did the one treatment and you, and you ran that tank full of fuel and you had a problem, then you know that it's time to pick up a wrench and start changing things or talk to a mechanic, but not before that. So that was the idea behind it. So we call it our two-step fuel treatment mm -hmm. now, or our two-step treatment, not fuel, but it's oil and fuel side. Yep. And well, we get a lot of questions because we have obviously customers that love diesel extreme, customers that love EDT. We have customers out there who, who use them both like they're supposed to, but we do get a lot of questions. You know, I, I love EDT, everyday diesel treatment, but what about diesel extreme? Or maybe it's vice versa. So we actually have a two step that we're going to talk about and um, basically just give you some, some insight in how to use them both together to, to get the most most out of your diesel well the idea evolved beyond that that's how we started we weren't really thinking 10 years down the road or five sure. years it was okay we have a problem i know there's a problem with these diesel engines how do i fix it well this is how we fix it mm -hmm. i talked to several chemists we came up with diesel extreme and then once we got that done you know we had so much feedback okay what do i do now you know i, I use a stiction eliminator my truck's running great how do i keep that from mm -hmm. happening again so that's where the fr3 came while well, my truck's running great i don't need to use diesel extreme every time what do i do next well that was the edt so it's two step this way and it's also two step this way, you know, two steps for the oil and then two steps for the fuel. But that was the way it evolved into a system. It wasn't, I didn't mastermind it that way, but it did, it works out well that way. Yeah, it does. So first up, Diesel Extreme. Many of you know, we recommend this product. It's not every tank full, right? We, we recommend every 6,000 miles, use this first. It's gonna go in and get that, that deep clean. Like Chris mentioned, there's a bunch of benefits to it. It's actually six in one fuel additive, but Deep clean, uh, strong cetane boost, and one, one of the, I think, personally, one of the 
major benefits of diesel extreme is the removal of IDIDs, the internal diesel injector deposits. Because these are, maybe I'm wrong, but within the past decade, a relatively new issue with diesels? Correct, it's, it, it didn't happen before that. It, it came when they took the sulfur out of the fuel. Everybody started adding lubricity additives into the fuel to make up for the sulfur. Once they took the sulfur out of diesel fuel, uh, the fuel became very dry, like kerosene, mm -hmm. and fuel pumps started going out, injectors started going out. So everybody, you know, they came up with a standard, the federal government came up with a standard, but then everybody started dumping in additives, the terminal, the refinery, mm -hmm. the fuel jobber, the end users. Well, the problem is that a lot of those chemistries were not compatible with each other, and it left behind, if you've got the wrong combination of chemicals, it left behind this really sticky brown um, substance that could not be removed. And when I say it couldn't be removed, I mean you could dump anything on the shelf in there and it wouldn't remove it. It's like trying to uh, clean up an oil-based paint with water. They just weren't compatible. So two companies came out with solutions to it, Afton and Lubrizol, but it took a very special additive that you had to incorporate into a, into a fuel additive. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, if you don't use this, you're not going to clean it. So we, you know, incorporated that in a cleanup treatment mm -hmm. version so that we would know that it would clean out the system the first time. And not every diesel additive that you find on the shelf is going to have the capability to remove No, ID. I'd say 90% of them do not. And if it has that specific additive that cleans IDIDs, it will say on there, cleans up IDIDs. Because it's such a big deal. Exactly. They, they want to promote it. Well, yeah. and it's expensive. That's an expensive um, piece of this puzzle. I mean, it's, you know, there's certain parts that are more expensive than others, and that's one of the more expensive mm -hmm. pieces. So if they put it in there, they're going to brag about it. Now, we know it cleans. We know it has a cetane boost, the lubricity, all of that stuff, but a lot of the, the major benefits you see is going to be the increased fuel economy, uh, a little bit better throttle response, horsepower, and that's really just a, a combination of everything working together. You mm -hmm. know, re re removing these varnish and deposits and increasing that combustibility of the fuel, all those combined is where you're going to get a lot of those improvements. Right. We're, when you think about it in two ways, there's two things happening inside there when you use a diesel extreme. Yeah. One is you're cleaning up all the things that were in there that shouldn't be in there. And then the second thing is you're chemically altering the fuel so that it burns better. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if it was a brand new clean system, you're still going to have better throttle response, more horsepower by using diesel extreme. You don't need it, but that part of it is going to still be there. You're, you're adding um, antioxidants into the fuel. You're also adding in the cetane boost and the other things that are going to help it burn more efficiently. They're called metal deactivators, but that doesn't mean anything to anybody <laughs> except you know, people that do this. But the point is, you're, you're making things that normally end up becoming soot. Uh, you're making them to create a BTU. So there's, there's two ways that you're getting efficiency inside the combustion engine. One is the BTU power. That's the amount of the explosion. The higher the BTU, the bigger the explosion. Mm -hmm. And then you have the cetane. The cetane value is giving you the efficiency of it. That's what's making it ignite at the right time. So if you can imagine, you know, two buckets of TNT, you know, one of them scattered all over, so when you throw a match on it, it kind of fizzles all over and explodes. Mm -hmm. That's when you have low cetane fuel. And then on the other one, it's all in one spot, and as soon as you throw the match in, it all explodes at one time. So those are the two aspects that we're attacking. You know, one is the BTU power, and the other one is the cetane. And like we said, diesel extreme, every 6,000 miles. If you're a huge fan, you want to use it every time, I suppose you could. It's not going to hurt anything, but no. that, that is why we have EDT for those people who want that. EDT is a more efficient way to treat your system after it's been cleaned out. Diesel Extreme is a more efficient way to clean your system out as opposed to EDT. If I wanted to clean, mm -hmm. I'd use Diesel Extreme. If I wanted to maintain, I would use EDT. Yep, so like I said, Diesel Extreme first, and then start using EDT every time you fill up. That's the two-step, and EDT is going to give you the same benefits as Diesel mm -hmm. Extreme and maintain that cleanliness and, and make everything last longer, really. Yep, it's what it was designed to do. So do we have any questions? Oh, we got a couple. See, and for those who don't know, the Mid American Trucking Show, end of the month, end of uh, March, Chris will be there. Um, hey, Jason. Jason said he'll be down there and see us at Matt's. Um, Stetson's got a question on stiction, so we'll wait just a minute on that one. Dalen's got a question. Uh, he says, We have two vendors in Texas, Walmart and Tractor Supply. Neither one carries EDT. Can we visit them on? visit them and, and commit them to, to carry the product. Well, Walmart doesn't have EDT. They have, they have Stiction Eliminator, but Tractor Supply does have EDT. Um, maybe they're just sold out a lot. You know, talk to the manager. Maybe they can get a little bit more in stock, but they definitely do carry it. It is at all the Tractor Supplies, and I was on my way back from Florida, and I had to stop by Tractor Supply and buy <laughs> some. So 
I went had to in, buy your own product. I had to buy my own product. <laughs> I went in track supply and, and picked it up. That was the only place I can get their RV into. All right, so we'll move on to the two-step oil side. The question Stetson had, he, he's asking, does it harm the motor at all to run stick and eliminator every second or third oil change? He's been running it in their service trucks every second and third, or second or third oil change. I was always curious, curious if it could be overused. No, you can, you can use stick and eliminator in every oil change if you wanted. It's just not the most economic way to do it. You can run diesel extreme every, every tank of fuel. It's just not the most economic way to do it. Um, it takes, when you, when you take out the detergent that we put in the stick and eliminator and work with the rest of the ingredients, we can get it down to a smaller dose, which is less expensive. So that, that was the motivation. And that's, that's it, the two-step. On the, on the oil side. So stick and eliminator first with a fresh oil change. When you make that change, add stick and eliminator. You leave it in the entire time. And similar to the fuel side, right? Stick and eliminator is going to go in, clean mm -hmm. everything out, and then when we get to the next step, FR3, it's going to help maintain and just increase longevity. And reduce wear. Of course. I mean, yeah. we, we had a 62% reduction on some of the tests with the stick and eliminator and like a 50% reduction with the FR3. We're going back to redo those and see if we can increase those. But that's that's a huge reduction if you think about that. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions there or do we get them all answered? Uh, that's it for now. So if you guys are watching, make sure you post questions below. Okay. And we're giving away product. Yeah, but let's, before we jump too far, Chris, let's talk about the, the FR3 a little bit in conjunction with Stiction. Okay. So people know Stiction Eliminator. Uh, like you said, first oil change, use it. It's four ounces per quart of oil. And we recommend it about every third oil change to mm -hmm. use stick and eliminator. In the meantime, for those in between oil changes, you want to use FR3. Correct. So we're, if you think about it, you know, we've got a lot of friction reducing. We've got a lot of esters that are making things really slippery in there. We've got the nano wrecks or the, the nano carbons in both of them. And what happens is with the stick and eliminator, because we're going for this really robust clean out, we've put extra detergents in there that would do a deep clean. Um, once the engine's been cleaned, those would be, you know, I don't want to say wasted, but they're not going to be as valuable. Your engine oil has a lot of detergent in it already. This is, this is up beyond that. So if you're, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this, it, you know, if, you're, if your engine is at a keep clean level with regular engine oil, but you've got, say, 100,000 or 200,000 miles worth of um, built up crusty stuff in there, this is what we want to use Stiction Eliminator to go in and remove. Not only is it going to, it's going to clean up any engine, and we don't advertise it for gasoline, but it would clean up a gasoline engine. Mm -hmm. If you have a high mileage car, high mileage pickup truck, use some use some six eliminator. It'll yeah. it'll run a lot better when you're done. And you'll notice it within a couple hundred miles yeah. in most cases. Yeah, it, it does a great job cleaning that up. Uh, but the, originally it was made just for stiction in the Ford six liter and the Ford seven mm -hmm. three. If you know somebody that owns a Ford six liter engine or a Ford seven three, they need to use that product. It's you know, the very reason we created it in the first place. But then after it's been cleaned, we can get the same effects with the FR3 as far as fuel economy gains, horsepower mm -hmm. gains, um, even a keep clean because the esters will keep it clean in there. Yeah, it's absolutely. not a deep clean, but it's a keep clean. When we did dynos and we, we compared the two, our power levels were the same, you know, using half as much FR3 as we did the stick one there. So again, there's a better value proposition for the customer. It's a better product at the right price. Mm -hmm. And both products, Stitch Eliminator and FR3, have the nanoparticles in there. Correct. So that's going to help reduce wear. Like we mentioned, Stitch, 62% reduction in wear. FR3 is up to about 43% reduction in wear. So if you figure you can help your engine last twice as long, it's a huge benefit. Absolutely. And, and very reasonable price. I think a, um, like a, a standard gasoline engine would take about eight ounces of FR3. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, a really reasonable way to keep protect your investment and yeah, make it run better. It's one and a half ounces per quart. And again, another reminder, FR3 can be used, obviously your engine oil, mm -hmm. but hydraulics, differentials. The power steering. Power steering. Power steering does a really good job. And now we're talking about the everyday uses of it. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you think right. about... You know, somebody like LaVon Miller at Firepunk, mm -hmm. he's using this and he's getting a, you know, a, an increase in horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, what was the horsepower gain? 5%? We did, yeah, it was 5%. It was a 6-7 Cummins. And um, we, we did a, a tuned and a non-tuned truck, but it was about 14 and a half more horsepower, which turned out to be about 5%. So that, that's a huge gain. And that's on a really highly precise piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, even if you're driving a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla, 
um, you're going to get gains and it's going to offset the price of the product, make your engine last twice as long and protect your investment. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, it's worth it all the way around. Absolutely. We do have other tests and other things. If you ever are curious about it and want to see more, email us and we'll send you all the test results. We're cons we do testing literally weekly yeah. and we all publish the all the time. It, it's, it's part of our life here and we publish that. It's not, you know, we don't keep it secret. We have binders of it and we keep it in the lab, but we're always, you know, looking at the limits of where this can go. So if you're ever curious about it, want to know, let us know. We'll email it over to you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our studies and white papers can be found on our website as well. So, mm -hmm. and if they're not on there by chance, send us an email. Like Chris said, we'll, we'll be more than happy to send it to you. Uh, so we got a couple more comments here. James Bruce. Hey, James. He chimes in every week. Um, yeah, he, he mentioned Kyle said James is banned from Free Product Friday. He's he's hit a couple times now, so he's probably set on the year for product. Uh, he says it's nice to see you back, Chris. Um, Thank you. He's still vibing for your your tagline here, your sign off. Loop it right, day and night. That that was James' great idea. Uh, let's see, Josh. Thank you, James. We'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, hi Josh, Josh was in just, uh, I believe it was last week, we had a guest on, so Josh did a great job. Picked up some FR3 actually, picked up a gallon of it. Uh, let's see, Nick, Nick Frame asks, he has a, a 335D BMW, and is, he's asking which products he should use. Uh, Nick, if you're not familiar with Trey Sykes, he's our sponsored racer, he drives the exact same thing, 335D uh, BMW. and. He runs just about everything, really. He's got EDT in the fuel. Uh, he runs our oil, which has FR3 infused with it. I believe he actually runs our, our Black Diamond PAO oil. And I know in the winter time, when he's because it's also his daily driver, he's using diesel winter anti gel. He's he's a bit south, but still gets cold down there. So, so to start off with, what I said earlier is what you would want to start with. I, um, you'd want to clean out your tank with some diesel extreme mm -hmm. if you've not used it before. You'd want to put some uh, stiction eliminator in the oil and an oil change. You'd only need, I think, eight ounces. Maybe yeah. So, yeah. so you don't need a lot. So you'd want to run that for the whole oil change. At that point, when you run through that fuel and you run through that oil change, the inside of that engine should look like brand new. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what we have found. When we do a scope uh, beforehand, we run it go back, you know, 5,000 miles later or 3,000 miles later, it should look brand new. Okay, that's the clean out, that's done. And then after that, you're gonna to wanna to use this every tank and then put this in every oil change and your engine should run, you know, like brand new. Yeah. See, Landon says, at a power steering pump, whining, stuck, um, oh, sucked some fluid out. He refilled it with FR3 and the whine immediately stopped. It's the we, crazy, it's the craziest we, thing. I we mean, hear it we, a lot. We We've, do. I've done it myself. I've done it on several cars. It, it's just the, the strangest thing that you can just literally hear it instantly mm -hmm. that stops whining. Yeah. I think the esters and the nanocarbons get in there and just coat everything and makes it run smoother. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Ryan. Ryan says he keeps cases of all these in stock. That's always good to hear. Where's Ryan? I'm not sure where Ryan's from. Ryan, where are you so we could give you a plug? See, Britt says, started using Stiction Eliminator, Diesel Extreme, EDT, and our Diesel Winter Anti-Gel in his 6-liter Power Stroke a few months ago. Coming up on the next oil change soon, is it better to use FR3 with his oil of choice, um, looks like maybe Shell, or to use our oil, which has FR3 in it? Let me give you the lowdown on that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of experience with the 6-liter. That's how we got started mm, into yeah. the retail part of this. It's a great engine when it's running. When it's not, it's really, really frustrating. The problem is it's a very efficient engine. International did a great job building it. And what it does is it shears the oil. So if you can imagine the hydrocarbons getting cut in half, and what's happening is it just has so much heat and so much pressure, not across the whole engine, but in certain spots, like in the turbocharger and in the, in the injectors. So to answer your question, um, if you change the oil often, and when I say often, I mean every three to 5,000 miles, you're fine. Um, once you get past that, that 5,000 mile mark, and, and Ford recommends every 7,000, and that's where the issue came in, between five and 7,000 miles, that oil has been spent, and it's really starting to build stiction up inside. So you're, if you look at it at 5,000 miles, it's black, it's real thin, it almost feels like kerosene, and what you're doing is you're leaving deposits all over. So if that's the case, 
your what I would do is if, if I wasn't going to buy our oil is I would start off with the stiction eliminator clean out the system and then every oil change after that use half of a treatment or one quart of stiction eliminator in the oil to keep it clean now the other option is to switch over to a, a synthetic a PAO synthetic oil now the difference between a PAO synthetic and a regular synthetic off the shelf is um, the shelf synthetics are a group three which are good but they're not as good as a group four and in that specific engine, you're really torturing that oil, and you really do need a group four if you're going to leave it in there for a while. Now, the, you can leave a group four in a Ford six liter for 20, 25,000 miles because you cannot shear it. It's that strong. So the cost versus the benefit is up to you. You'll, you'll get better fuel economy. Um, you can leave it in there longer. You don't have to change it as often. Or you can use your regular oil, your Shell, your Chevron, use the stiction eliminator go back in with a half a treatment every oil change and you'll keep it clean and it'll be fine and we've got literally tens probably hundreds of thousands of uh, users that have done that and have reported back over the last 10 years that it works fine that way mm -hmm. so you, you know you're you're safe it's you're in good company and when chris mentions a, a group four oil that's what we refer to as our pao it's yep. uh some what's the poly, poly alpha, poly alpha olefin it's a yeah. it's a very specific kind of oil it was man-made so group three is a is a crude base oil like we pump out of the ground here in ohio and then they refine it to a, a level three group stock which means it's just more refined it's more they take out more of the light ends more of the things that would shear off so it's a more stable oil than a group two or group one mm -hmm. um, but it still shears group four on the other hand group fours and fives are man-made completely man-made so every molecule looks exactly the same and they, they they have a lot more bonding power and they're next to impossible to get them to break apart so it's it's a very expensive oil but it you know for what it's needed it does a great job mm -hmm. you know and that's what we offer in our blue diamond and black diamond oil yep. blue diamond black diamond are, are group four pao synthetics and i think the green diamond is a mixture of group four and group three mm -hmm. so it just gives you an idea of of what we're trying to achieve but if that's what you're looking for it's, it's a good way to go we got another question from eric he asks he has a Duramax, Duramax um, engine oil. He doesn't say what kind of oil he runs, but would you, would he should should he run FR3 or stiction eliminator or both? He just got diesel extreme and started running that. Don't run both because it's a waste of money. At the same time. At the same right, time. Right. Correct. Yeah, we everything that's in FR3 is already in stiction eliminator, mm -hmm. so you don't need more of anything on that. Um, if it's got over a hundred thousand miles, is is my rule of thumb. If you have over 100,000 miles on it, I would start off with a with a stiction eliminator treatment. If you're hovering around 50 or 60,000 miles, then I would just start off with the FR3. Unless the one caveat on that would be unless it's old, older. What do you say? What year? No, he does not. No, we have people that call in that have you know like a um, you know 2004 Duramax with 40,000 miles on it. Well, you know that's got a lot, 15 years. Yeah. That there's time for things to build up it's kind of a strange concept because you're thinking you change your oil every 3,000 miles but once you start your engine up and the oil starts in that um, combustion process you start to build up acids and you start to break down the oil so even if you ran a car for 2,000 miles and then parked it in your garage for five years you still got a lot of acid and crud built up in there even though the oil looked clean when you put it away you started that acid generation and now you've let it sit so it continues on so in those cases where you've got a lot of years or a lot of miles i always start with a clean out and then move over to the fr3 well in the same in the same vein say you only have 50 60 000 miles but you're pulling heavy loads every day oh yeah that's yeah. that's going to cause that oil to, to shear and oxidize a bit quicker as well correct if you're if you're pushing your equipment hard and we do that here i do that myself personally you know just if it's made for this and we do this you know right. it just it happens um you know th those are the places where you're going to shear the oil i mean think about it the the manufacturers and the oil people are saying you know this is made for half ton limit or it's made to pull six thousand pounds they engineer everything based on that so when you go down the road with ten thousand pounds that you're pulling and you're going up a hill you know you're putting past this limit that means it's going to break but it, you're also shearing the oil and you're leaving behind deposits so it's it's worth cleaning out and Ryan, who said he keeps a couple cases in stock, said he's from Delaware. I don't know if he's talking about Delaware County down the road or if he's talking about the state. <laughs> More information, Ryan. Yeah, Keep it coming. On. We know he's in Delaware. Now we'll just need a state. <laughs> Delaware, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Delaware State. 
State, okay. Delaware State. Redbird Speed Shop. Oh, okay, Redbird. Redbird, well, thank you. Good job, Levi. Redbird Speed Shop. See, uh, day one chime back in again, says he used his Stix Eliminator in his 3.5 EcoBoost and also follows it up with FR3, says it works great. I have had a lot of calls from people specifically with an EcoBoost in the last mm -hmm. two years. It kind of surprised me because I wasn't thinking of that, but I had old colleagues of mine call me and say, I don't, I can't believe the difference it's made. So there's, there's something there. Mm -hmm. And it could be that the EcoBoost is a really efficient engine and the oil just kind of breaks down and you got stiction building up in there. That's one of those really unique places where the value of the product's even higher than other places. Mm -hmm. And Brent Hilliard, who earlier was asking whether to use our oil or use our additives with his own oil. Um, he chimed back in and says he changes his oil about every 6,000 miles in that, that six liter. You're right on the cusp. If it's a, if you're using like a mobile synthetic or Chevron synthetic, you're probably right on the verge. So use a half a treatment of Stiction Eliminator after that or switch over. You should price out like the green diamond. It might even be cheaper than mm -hmm. what you're buying. Yeah. So we've got a question that came in through Messenger. They're asking, what's the main difference between our green diamond and blue diamond engine oil? Would an everyday driver ever need the blue over the green? The green is semi-synthetic. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a mixture of group three and group four. Um, the daily driver would be perfect. It would outperform anything you should buy on the shelf. It should do better than literally any product on the shelf. Now the, the blue diamond for the everyday driver, it would be really useful if you have a extremely expensive piece of equipment that you never want to break. Yeah. Um, a good example of that might be, you know, like a $200,000 RV that, <laughs> that would cost $50,000 to replace the engine. Um, a boat, you know, a mm -hmm. marine engine, uh, maybe a bulldozer. Well, that's not everyday driver. Something like that. Or the other area would be, you know, you consistently overuse your equipment. You know, I have a half ton truck and I'm pulling 15,000 pounds all over. You know, you're, you know you're over the limit. Then the third place would be extended drain interval. Um, you know, I'm going to, I don't change my oil often. I'll, I'll tell you a place where I sell, where a lot of people buy that product. Um, sales reps that we know that drive 50, 60,000 miles a year. And they're, these are, you know, gasoline engines. And, you know, they've told me before, if I was to change my oil every 5,000 miles, that would be every other week. And I'm not going to do that. So I hook them up with Blue Diamond and they'll go, six months or a year between oil changes. It can be done safely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll check the oil at 50,000 miles, it still looks good. So those are places where you can use it. If, if you're the type of person that drives 3,000 miles a year and you stop at Jiffy Lube, it's probably not a good bargain for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, unless you're driving a Corvette or a BMW or something that you're thinking, you know, this, you know I want this thing to last yeah. my whole life. Mm -hmm. Cause you're getting protection. I mean, there's two sides of this. The oil lasts longer and the engine lasts longer. So we're, you know, which of those value prospects are you going after? Right. I need my engine to last forever or I need my oil to last forever. Yeah. That's where we come in. So we got um, somebody else chimed in, the bearded medic. Uh, he said he bought 7.3 liter power stroke uh, first oil change used Stiction Eliminator. The next one used FR3. He said after the Stiction Eliminator application, uh, miles per gallon went to 17.2. Wow. And now he's down to 16.5. So I'm curious, uh, bearded medic, let us know how many miles is on the 7.3. Well, the other thing might also be it's winter time right now. I don't know where you're at, but in the winter time, the you know the the refineries and the terminals start to thin out the fuel and they put um, they don't say it this way but it, to make you understand that they put a number one in so it might even though you're still buying number two fuel it's more like a 1.75 so they've they've tried to water down a little bit with kerosene so it doesn't freeze as quickly um, all diesel fuel is going to gel at some point mm -hmm. but if you compared today's fuel what is it we're march mm -hmm. if you look at march and you did a btu count on it versus a btu count in june you will see more btus in june and you will see a lower pour point in march mm -hmm. so i don't know if that makes sense but it's 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 they always do it every winter it's been as i've been Since, doing this for 25 years and it's always been the case yeah he says he has 217,000 miles on a 7.3. Let me tell you, that 7.3 is one of the best engines ever yeah. made. Do not ever sell that thing. You, <laughs> I mean, I know people personally that have over half a million miles on without ever doing anything mm -hmm. to it. So you wait and see what happens in the summer. Uh, and he said he, he's up. in Michigan as well. 
So that yeah. could be part of it. Yeah, you've got light fuel. We'll just just wait until May and see. And you might run a second, uh, you know, a second treatment of D, of a uh, station eliminator this summer and see if that doesn't clean out anything that's left in there. Mm -hmm. And we got another question from James Bruce. He chimes in quite a bit. Like I said, we, we get these questions a lot. He's asking us, when are we going to do a filter besides France? We are working on that. <laughs> the the difficulty with the filter applications is that there are so many filters mm -hmm. um it, there's just a lot of them and you know if you go to the parts store and you see that whole shelf i don't know that we can stock all of those or have special filters made but we did task research and development with researching the different filter companies and what the differences are be, between them so we can find the best of the best we don't want to sell anything here unless it's the best of the best and it's leaps and bounds better than everything else they have found a small filter company that seems to have unique technology. And what we might do is start off with all the basics, like the, the 7.3 filter, the 6-liter filter, the Duramax filter, then stock the top 10 and offer those as part of a kit. That's part of our e-commerce strategy is to start putting together kits for people. You know, I've got a 7.3 and this is what I want. I've got a 6.0. Which we've, I know Levi and Carmen's been working on that. We've got some, some brand new bundles on the website as well. So yeah. we're, we're headed down the, the right path. There. Yeah, we, we want to make it easier for you, the consumer. You know, it's, we are a very information intense company. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's what we do, but it does make it hard unless you're really into this. And we know that. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to make it easier. You know, really what I want is I've got a Volkswagen Rabbit and I want <laughs> the clean out kit yeah. and I want the follow up. Yeah. Okay, here's what you need. So. We, we'll we'll get there uh, soon, like within this quarter or next quarter. Mm -hmm. well, let's see. Eric chimed in earlier asking about his Duramax. He actually has two of them, uh, 2015 with only 25,000 miles and an 05 with 270,000 miles. I've uh, been running mobile 1540. Okay. The, the one with the 200,000 miles definitely sticks Stiction, to one there. Yeah. yeah. And the other one doesn't have enough time on it i would just start with fr3, FR3 yep, yeah you'll be fine and same way with the diesel extreme and the edt i would i would start off with edt in the newer one and use diesel extreme in the older one all right so let's uh we gotta wrap it up here chris um, okay. thanks everybody for all the questions we we got to give out some some free product um let's take a couple people here while you're doing that remember you get a free t-shirt with any order over 100 bucks on the web this week just remember in the order notes to put in your size, and this is only while supplies last. Uh, let's see, what's um, Bearded Medic with the 7.3? We'll, we'll send you out a bottle there up in Michigan. That's a good idea. Um, how about Eric Lockwood as well? And we'll do one more. Levi, how about the, the person who messaged in on, on Messenger? Let's, uh, let's message them back, give them a free bottle. And don't forget to subscribe to our email newsletter mm -hmm. for exclusive deals, um, updates, and a lot of good technical information that you won't find anywhere else. Like and follow us on Facebook if you haven't done that already. And stay tuned because TJ is about to come live from the racetrack in Florida. He's probably already waiting on us. Yeah. And then later, Kyle will be going live from Texas around 8 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. So Eric and uh, the Bearder Medic, message us your, your address, a good shipping address for you. And we'll get some stick eliminators sent out to you. And uh, like Chris mentioned, stay tuned on the Facebook page. TJ's coming up. And then also tonight, 8 o'clock, Kyle will be going from, from Texas. Yep. And uh, as far as us here in the studio, we're going to sign off for the weekend. But we'll be back next Friday, 3 o'clock. You got it. Have a good weekend. Take care, guys. Thanks. Keeping you lubricated day and night. <laughs> That's right. He said he's going to think of more, James. So we'll see if he comes up with some other good ones.